<laughs> well, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get to the YouTube live dashboard, but lately YouTube has been incredibly buggy and uh, I'm finding it virtually impossible to do it. So I might just, uh, well, I can see that you guys are here and that you're seeing this. So uh, maybe we'll just sort of get on with doing this live stream. I mean, yeah, what, what is going on? <laughs> Give me a few minutes, guys. I'll get this sorted out and then we'll come on. I've got some news for you all. It's that time again. <coughs> we are here live right now at the moment. Hopefully the stream's going. Who knows? Who knows? Apparently it started two minutes ago and we're here and it's all going. <laughs> so yes, here I am. Welcome everybody to the live stream with me, James from Plumber Parts. Let's just move this so you can see me a little bit easier. Um, how's it all going everybody? Thanks ever so much for coming today uh, to this live stream on Easter Monday. Um, thank you, Andy. He says, evening, evening. Thank you very much, Andy. Tim, uh, Jim Treaky says, all right, James. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it does seem like this, uh, this stream is incredibly low in latency at the moment. So hopefully you'll be able to see me okay in a few minutes' time. Oh, there we are. We are finally here. Um, Sean Hammond, evening James, Andy Newton, evening Playmates, and Jim Treaky. All right, James. Thanks ever so much, guys. Uh, pop some bits in the chat. I will try to answer any of your little questions and bits and bobs in a few minutes. Uh, but firstly, I just want to tell you what's been going on um, at Plumber Parts. Some of you may have noticed that uh, the amount of videos that I've been putting out lately has been incredibly low. Um, and uh, there's a huge reason for that. And it's a brilliant reason, life-changing great great thing that's happened um so uh some of you may or may not know that my wife uh, and i were expecting our first baby baby son baby boy theodore um and he was due to arrive on the 27th of february my wife was constantly worried um that he would be born on the 29th of February, which would mean very cheap when it comes to birthdays because he'd only have one every four years due to the leap year in, in Feb. Um, he uh, didn't turn up on the 27th and he didn't turn up on the 29th. Um, we, uh, well, we had a few, you know what it's like. Any of you who've had kids, you'll realise that you have uh, antenatal appointments and about a week after the due date, we had an antenatal appointment and the lady who had an incredibly bad cold for some reason uh, didn't seem to mind about the fact that she was still at work. And I was like, why are you here, love? My missus is, you know, nine, nine months plus a week and three days or whatever pregnant sort of thing. I don't want you breathing germs all over her. But anyway, as probably some of you probably may be aware, I'm not 100 percent bothered about uh some of the restrictions we've had to live through over the last sort of three or four years. So I didn't really mind too much. But anyway, the uh, lady did a uh, examination on Emily and found or th what she thought was that Theo was breech, which if you put it this way, it's like laying a turd across the bowl of a toilet, but not facing down it. So for that, using a nice little plumbing analogy there for you all. Um, and uh, that was not great news. We were a bit worried. Um and that was on a Friday. Uh, the next day, Saturday morning, beautiful, beautiful summer's, well, spring morning. Um, Emily was in quite a lot of pain. And the pain was kept fairly constant, which isn't actually uh, labour pains. Labour pains tend to come and go. It's what they, they call them. I can't remember what they call like contractions, basically. They, they come and go really, 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 really strong. And then they go away again for a little while and they give you a little bit of a break. Um and then they did start to be fairly kind of regular, these these se sessions of pain, okay? Um, and we kind of decided, hold on, this could be this could be it. Ted's on his way. Um, and we decided, I, I kind of decided, we got to ring the midwife at hospital. Uh, evening, Vic, thank you for the for the message. Uh, basically, we uh, we went into hospital uh, to the birthing centre in our local hospital in Cambridge. 
Addenbrooke's Hospital, the Rosie, um, where my wife was born. <laughs> but I wasn't born there. I was actually born in Newmarket. Um, but anyway, uh, we got there and um, Emily's contractions were, you know, they were like, look, yeah, you're having contractions. The baby's on, on his way. Um, and Emily said, look, you know, it might be, we were told yesterday it might be breach. Uh, and they kind of had a little examination and they were like, well, we think he's actually fully engaged, head down, ready to roll. Um, and uh, we decided that, um, and, and this was actually the nurse's or the midwife's suggestion, Emily would have two paracetamol and go home for a while to wait. But that didn't quite happen like that. Emily's contractions got a lot stronger and the midwife, a young lady called Amy, who is a student at the local university and can't have been old, much older than like mid twenties. I'd have thought, still just really young, you know. Um, she she was like, well, I think maybe you should stay here now. And we'd elected to have like a birthing pool thing, or at least being in like this nice warm bath is supposed to be a lot nicer for labour and stuff like that. Not a sort of place. I mean, it used to be back in the day that the men were told just to go down the pub, but it doesn't seem to be like that anymore. And uh, I w dearly would have done, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, so Emily got in the pool, and 20 minutes later, Ted, Theodore, arrived in this world. Uh, my little baby boy, the most amazing, um, most amazing thing to, to be, to see and be a part of. Uh, Emily pushed him out like a bloody cannonball. He came out, <laughs> I mean, a 22-minute labour. Uh, a lot of the other uh, midwives were pretty like, wow, that is impressive. I mean, we see a lot of births here. This is our job. Um, so, yeah, Ted was born about seven-odd pounds. Um, and we uh, we were left in the room uh, for a while, me, Emily and Ted, to get to know each other. Uh, first thing I did was put his England rugby top on and we sat and watched England Ireland together on my phone and it was the game where uh, we got the drop goal right at the end uh, of the game. Uh, at that point, Amy uh, came back in and said, look, I need to do some tests on, on Ted to make sure he's okay. Um, and uh, she wasn't very happy about one of his readings, which is his SpO2 reading, which is a reading of the amount of oxygen in his blood. She tested it on one wrist, then on the other wrist, then on his ankles, either ankle, and all the tests were coming back that he had low oxygen in his blood. Um, and it went from this sort of, she said, I'm just going to speak to one of the doctors upstairs. I didn't know what upstairs meant, um, but I did. I knew within about half an hour what it meant. Um Basically, uh, she came back in with a doctor, then another doctor, and then another doctor. And then it went from this sort of lovely, um, the lovely sort of sitting in this room and getting to know each other, to them rushing in an incubator, putting our little baby into a, a little glass box with all these wires and leads and tubes and stuff. Um, and then he was rushed up into intensive care. Um it was hard, actually, because it was obviously very hard. Emily was being um, actually looked after by one of the nurses. Uh, so I had to go up with him into intensive care on my own. And honestly, guys, it's not a thing I ever really want to have to do ever again. Going up in this big lift with your baby in an incubator, all these people there. And they wheeled him into this dark room where there are about three other cots in there. Uh, and they just w hooked him up on all these bloody like you know he had sensors on his chest uh they put this air thing a CPAP they call it uh onto his nose that had um pressurized oxygen being blown into his lungs um and uh this lovely lady Tina who was uh, I called her auntie Tina um she basically said look this looks really really bad but it's not. She said it's um, it's very common for, especially boys for some reason, if they've come through in a very, very quick labour, they haven't had all the chance to squeeze like the mucus out of their lungs that uh, over a whole nine months kind of gets built up in there as they develop and everything. Um, and that, so we had to sort of, my after a while, my wife was sort of well enough to come up and, and sit with him for a little while. And we sat with him until about uh, 10 o'clock that night, 10 or 11 o'clock that night. Uh, and then they said, look, you guys, there's no, usually what happens is, is the parents can stay in this, uh, on this floor downstairs, which is almost like very rudimentary hotel rooms. Um, but they, they said, um, there isn't any room. So you, you're going to have to go home and we only live like 10 or 15 minutes away. So 
as hard as it was to leave poor little Ted on his bed, all wired up, this tiny little baby, um, it, it was the right thing for us to do, to just get home, have some sleep. Uh, what I did, I got home, drank a bottle of wine and then some sherry and woke up the next day with an almighty hangover. Um, but so began a, a week of, like, I forgot that I was a plumber. I forgot that I ran a YouTube channel. I forgot that I play in a cricket team. I forgot that I have mates or anything like that. And we spent the next week going to uh, intensive care at eight in the morning, sitting with him until 4.30 at night, and then uh, coming home and then going back at eight in the evening and sitting with him till about half 10, 11, or until when Tina or one of the other nurses said, you two need to go home now because you are shattered. Uh, obviously, sleep was pretty hard uh, uh, during those times. And um, it was just all round very, very stressful. But at the same time, the next day when I got in, they turned the oxygen down to normal atmospheric levels, which is about 20 percent, I think, what we have, what we breathe. But he was still on forced air. And then they would gradually eased off the pressure over a few days. And then he was moved from um, that part of ICU into a place that I think you probably see it as fattening up and strengthening side of ICU. Um, he was a full term baby and there were some other babies in there that were incredibly like small and I think some of the hardest things about being in there, um, Emily saw uh, a little baby come in who'd been born uh, about two, two, two and a half months pre premature. And he was in an, an incubator with the light on him. And after a while, he was born by a cesarean section. And they, after a while, they wheeled his mum in, but she was on a bed and um, she couldn't see him because she was on this bed you see and uh, all she asked was uh, what color was his hair and you think god this is a bleak place and there, there was another baby in there that was not well at all and there's ted laying there um big and fat and pink <laughs> like a little pork sausage um and he you know really he could have probably come out after three or four days Anyway, he moved into the fattening up area and um, every so often he was having to be fed through a tube in his nose. Every, every time they do that, they take a bit of, they actually suck out a little bit of what's in his stomach and test the pH level. And on one day they sucked it out and they found this like green fluid in his stomach. Uh, and the nurse was really good, actually. She said, oh, that's unusual. And she didn't sort of say anything to us to worry us, but she obviously was concerned and um, she told the doctors about it, I, I imagine, without us. You know, she didn't really... She she probably said, I'll mention it to the doctor. We'll see if they do anything. Anyway, we went home that night and she knew that we were coming back at eight o'clock, which is when they kind of change over the, the night to day... Uh, the day to the night shift. And uh, what we walked into was really quite shocking. We, we walked into the room um, and Ted was in an incubator again. There were four or five doctors around him. And it was all like, oh, my God, what's going on? And my first question was like, is he all right? What's going on? Um, and she said, I'm really sorry. I, I, I kept looking at the clock and I knew you'd walk in to see this. She said, we've um, we've tested his stuff in his lungs and um, he might have to have surgery uh, on, on something. So um, he's got to go down to have an X-ray and have a scan. Uh, and then the surgeons are going to have a look at the X-ray and scan and see if they have to operate tonight. So why don't you two just go for a walk around the hospital for an hour, right? Uh, I think it's pretty much the bleakest. I mean, Emily burst into tears. I was very close to tears, but in a way it was like, you know, you've kind of just got, one of you's got to try and look after the other in situations like that. And we went for a walk around Adambrook's hospital, all around the lovely new buildings and Papworth and things like that in the, in the rain both of us crying in the dark as we walked about and both of us just like, oh my God, this is just, when is this going to end? You know, this had been going on for three or four days now he'd been in. Um, we walked around for an hour and then we walked back up and uh, Emily, after that, every time he went to ICU to see him, Emily said, can you look through the door first, please, to make sure that nothing bad is going on and there's loads of stuff. So on this first occasion, I looked through the door and there was Ted laying in his cot, fast asleep. And I walked in and the nurse who should have clocked off by then, like had stayed back. And she said, I, I just want to tell you, he's already been discharged by the surgeons. He's absolutely fine. Uh, the green fluid might have just been something left over from when he was born. Um, but they're completely happy 
and he's been discharged. So that huge worry was like another big hurdle that we got over. And then after that, he just basically started eating more and farting and pooing. Doing, got got extra, very good training from the guys in um, intensive care on how to change his nappy and all that sort of stuff. Got a crash course in being a parent. Um, and then uh, a week later, so a week after he was born, uh, they said at 10 in the morning, the doctors came around and did their rounds. And believe me, guys, this is like a full on... Um, like whatever you read about the NHS and stuff like that in newspapers, this is exactly what is the problem with it, okay? So they came around, the doctors and the nurses have been absolutely amazing. They came around at 10 in the morning and the doctor said, why is he still here? Um, the day before, there'd been a leak in the roof of the ward next door. So they'd lost about 10 cots in there or, or some a certain amount of cots. And funny enough, I was sort of sat there with Ted and I was like, well, look, I'm a plumber. I can maybe go in there and have a look and see what it is. But there was nothing I could do. Like, and also, you're not really allowed to. They were just like, "Do you think it's, do you think it's, um, like soil pipe?" And I was like, "Well, look, this is the top floor. Above you is the plant room." I said, "It actually smells a bit inhibitory, so I think it's heating system water." But it still still meant they had to clean out that whole bit. Um, so yeah, so basically. They really needed Ted's bed back. Um, and so they discharged him at 10 in the morning and said, oh, we'll just wait for a bit of paperwork and then you can go. That bit of paperwork took seven and a half hours to turn up to the point where the nurses were like, what is going on? They were, they were like, you know, we love you guys. You know, by then, after being in there for a week, you get to know everyone really well. And um, But we really want to see the back of you now. And we just wanted to get home and get on with our lives with our baby. And um, so that's... That was it, like 7, 7.30 that night. Um, I walked out with Ted. I don't know if I've got any, I might have a few photos we can have a look at, uh, if I can get them up. I'm very mindful. I don't really want to share loads of photos of him because, you know, he's my Tedlet. Um, but um, you get to, oh, I'll show you this. Maybe you'll, you'll, you might like this. Uh, so this was the room that he was in. Here's Emily here. This is the, I'll see if I can just show you comp screen one. So this is the room that Emily was in with him. This is, um, so this is like fucking hard to look at actually. I haven't, I haven't actually looked at this. So yeah, uh, that was the room he was in the day he was born. Um, and Emily, you can see he's quite concerned there. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was really like hard work. And I remember after a while we'd been going there and just kept thinking, oh, when are we going to get him back? You know, and in the, um, in uh, Niku, there's this little bell on there, and it says this. Yeah, ring this bell three times. Well, it's told to clearly say, "You helped me grow. It's time to go." So I am on my way, and that's by the exit to Niku. And every time I went past it, I was like, "I can't wait to ring that bloody bell. I really can't." And one night, my mate Greg ran me up. He he was best man at my wedding, and I was driving back and. Um, I just sort of burst into tears. Like it was, our, it was that. It was the Tuesday where they said they might have to give him a lumbar punch. God, God, we've we've been through so much shit in the last couple of weeks. Um, and I, and in fact, I'll tell you some of the stories of the other parents that really make what we went through look like nothing, because we were only in there a week, and there were some parents who'd been in there like months trying to get their children to get to be well enough to come home. But um, we were there for that long. And then one day, like they said, oh, you can you can leave now. And uh, yeah, so this is the, this should be, hold on, I'm trying to make sure I hit the right button here. Is it this button? Yeah, so this one, this is us oh, ringing his little bell. It's not the best ring ever, but it's three times. Do you like that, Teddy? Hello, my little chunklet. <laughs> <laughs> no. Go on then, go for it. Yeah, so um, we got to ring his bell and we got him home. And uh, he's been doing absolutely brilliantly, touch wood, so far. Um, first few nights were a big struggle, uh, getting used to sleep. And also, Emily and I have lived in our home together for, you know, 10 years on our own. And uh, we have, you know, all we had with us was Big G. But um, we, uh, we had a really, really big family do. Uh, yesterday, we had loads of family over for Easter. So, um, yeah, it was nice to have everyone sort of meet him. And here's, uh, here's a little photo of us leaving, leaving with the little man. So, yeah, that was me leaving hospital with him uh, that night. And, uh, yeah, it was really, really nice to just get him home. And, uh, yeah, I think I've got a cool photo of uh, 
So we've got like a family family thing. I'm sure my everyone's families won't mind me sharing this with you. But here's the family photo of everyone yesterday with Ted. And there he is photo bombing it a couple of minutes later. But um, it's been a really, really uh, mad couple of days. Um, mad couple of days. Some of you may know that I fly a little aircraft. So I've donated four flights to be given away as a raffle at the dinner for um, NICU at Adam Brooks. Uh, and I am going to uh, do fundraising for them. Um, I have done fundraising before for a charity called Something to Look Forward To, where I, I have been offering flights to them. But for some reason, they haven't given any to me for a while. Um, oh, what's going on here? Don't know why we've gone back to that. What was going on? We. Main camera, everyone all right? Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I thought I just accidentally done something silly there. Uh, so there we go. But um, yeah, it was uh, it was just a crazy, 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 crazy few days. Um, but we're all back home now and we're all safe and we're all good. Thank you very much for your comments. Kevin, the England rugby top did fit. And I'm still convinced that it was that drop goal that made Ted go, oh, I can't breathe quite properly. I can't believe that's happened. But for Ted's first ever rugby match was uh, us thrashing Ireland with that drop goal. Well, we didn't thrash them, but what an ending. Um, yeah, after Glow, we're doing really, really well now. David Fee, no worries, mate. I'm very glad that you've uh, that you've listened and you've watched everything. Um, so I, what I'm saying is, is now I'm going to um, do fundraising for NICU at Addenbrooke's, but also I'm going to try to uh, give some flights uh, to the people who work at Addenbrooke's in NICU uh, directly. So if any of them want to, want to come flying, they can. Uh, but also Amy, the lady who noticed that um, Ted's sats were low and effectively was the catalyst she noticed something that was not quite right and she worked really really quickly and she was brilliant throughout the birth with us the whole time and after we'd been um after we'd been discharged into ICU she uh she just turned she appeared upstairs in ICU and I was like all right Amy you know you should have clocked off ages ago she said oh I finished my shift a little while earlier she said I just wanted to come up and speak to you because I wanted to see if Ted was okay and see if you guys are all right and they're they're in that in itself is the fact that the people who work on the front line um, in healthcare and, and and in the NHS are amazing people. They do a great job and it's a vocation. It's not a job, uh, but there are incredibly, it's incredibly badly run. <laughs> so it needs fixing from that level. Um, I mean, they were flying some bloody pride flag with the sort of arrows and the dot on it and, um, and I was thinking, well, why, the, why have you got that up? And how much did that cost? And how many, what was it they called them? Um, they, they have to hire these people, don't they? Hundreds of thousands of pounds a year cost to make sure that they employ a certain amount of each type of person. Whereas all I want is for the best type of person for that job to be hired, the most qualified, the most um, competent. And uh, I don't think we should be spending loads of money on people to just ha do that as a job. That, that their money should be going to people like Amy and Tina and the people who looked after my son in those wards and those times when we were really, really desperate for help. And and it was amazing. It was just amazing to see. So we're offering them a flight. So that's one of the reasons I've not done a video for a little while. Um, and it's great, like Max, our cameraman, is uh, he's got a sort of 14-month-old baby. And it's been really, really good to sort of speak to him about it. He was desperate to meet Ted. And uh, he's got a thing about smelling babies. He kept saying to me, mate, wait, wait till the baby's here. Wait till Ted's here and smell him. And I was like, mate, what are you want about? It sounds fucking weird. Like, what are you? Some sort of Larry pedo. And, um, but then when Ted was here, I was like, wow, yeah, he's right. They do smell like this unusual sort of fresh weird sort of baby smell and he still smells like that now apart from the fact that he did an absolutely massive shit earlier on so I'm gonna have a bath with him later on tonight and I've just found like doing fatherhood so far and I think especially very early on in um in a baby's life or in a you know in a son or daughter's life obviously most of the emphasis of care comes on to the mum and in a way my main job is actually just sort of support Emily make sure that we're um, looking after the house and you know, make sure that everything's clean uh, and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's been great to sort of have baths with him. So me, it's now just me and Ted always have a bath together. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he does piss in the bath, but I probably don't notice it. Uh, but I just love it. Like today he smiled 
Uh, and he, I was looking at him, holding him, going, all right, Ted, because I take him out in the, in the morning, every morning. First thing we do is go outside and get some sun on him so he knows that it's the start of the day. He's got that sort of rhythm in, his, in him. And today I was looking at him, I was like, Ted, and he just sort of smiled at me. I don't know if he knew why he was smiling. Maybe he was like, God, you are so ugly, Dad. Um, but yeah, it's just a heart a smile to melt your heart, especially when you've been woken up that night. It's sort of, well, <laughs> last night we had a lot of people over for a party and then all my mates came around and Emily's friends for, cause it was Emily's 40th birthday. Um, so we had a sort of a big old thing going on and, uh, I stayed up a little bit too late and probably drank quite a lot of wine, but I said to Emily, I'll obviously do the night shift. Oh my God. I regretted that like half 12. Ted was bawling. He's like, I want my dinner. And I was like, mate. So I'm sat there in his bedroom, feeding him, burping him and all that. And uh, a lot of people have said to me, mate, don't wish it away. Honestly, it goes so quick. So just enjoy it. And I'm really mindfully trying to do that. So that's one of the reasons um, we haven't been, I haven't been online doing loads of plumbing videos. But believe me, next week we're going straight back in. Um, I'm filming I'm actually moving my oil tank because I'm building a swimming pool in my garden, all of which will be filmed on Plumber Parts. But also one of the main things that I've been doing that actually went live yesterday was the uh, online plumbing course. Um, so that is, uh, let me just get it up for you now, guys. Oh, dearie me. So where's Learn? So it's learnplumbingonline.com. And it's a really good place for people to just basically uh, find uh uh, it's, it's, I've collated what I think people need to know uh, when it comes to uh, plumbing online about effectively. Uh, and this is the course here. So it's Learn Plumbing Online. You've got a nice little video of me uh, talking about it. Well, we can have a little listen, shall we? Let's have a listen. Here you go. The extra job you get will easily pay for the cost oh, of the course. I've Let's got it sped up. James Why? With over 25 years experience. Oh, here we go. Check this first, out. The first leak you solve at home to the first extra job you get will easily pay for the cost of this course. So let's get started. My name's James. I'm a professional plumber with over 25 years experience. I was even plumbing with my dad and my teacher when I was 10 years old. I also run the hugely successful YouTube channel Plumber Parts, all about plumbing with over 350,000 followers across social media. I want to help you in this structured course to learn the essential basics of my trade. It must be really annoying when you notice a patch on the ceiling or a drip under the sink, but you don't have the skills to fix the problem. In this course, you will learn the basics of plumbing with loads of follow along practical videos. You'll even be able to ask me questions in the discussion section next to each lesson. You'll learn about pipe sizes, fittings, tools, how they work, joining methods like soldering, compression, solvent weld, how to bend copper pipe, how to turn valves on and off safely, and how to fix them if they leak. We'll cover basic health and safety We'll even make a frame together, the same ones that apprentices do at MVQ level using everything we've learned previously. I'll show you how to pressure test it and we'll test the leaks together. After the course, you'll be able to do so much more in the world of plumbing, from DIY jobs to adding plumbing to your services, to being ahead of the game should you want to join this wonderful trade. So why wait? Now, I hear you saying that there's loads of courses out there and they all sound like a scam. How is my one any different? And you're right, there are lots of courses out there on many subjects and they promise six weeks this and you'll have an MVQ that. And as a professional plumber, I see loads of people who think that by doing a six week course, it means that they're ready to put a sign on their van and money in their pocket. I'm not offering you that in this course. I will teach you the skills you need to know to consider plumbing as a career or to do most DIY jobs around the house. I've laid out in the course exactly what we cover so you'll know what you'll learn and what you're paying for. If you put in the time and effort to complete this course, you will be well on the way to earning good money out of plumbing one day. Remember, the first leak you solve at home to the first extra job you get will easily pay for the cost of this course. So. Let's get started. to complete that next
And that's sorry, guys. Fucking, hell, I just realised my bloody mic's been off all that time. You lot have all been like, "Where is he?" <laughs> oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm so sorry about that. Ding. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm reading all your messages now. You t- tosses. All right, I'll read it out. Sean Hammond. No volume. Tim Treaky. Your audio. Jim said, "Where's the sound?" Alex Rowley. Muted. <laughs> Oh, you gits. I wish there was a way you could, like, buzz me or something like that, and then I'd know about it. But, uh... <laughs> oh, dearie me. I'm so sorry about that, guys. <laughs> but, yeah, um, hopefully um, hopefully, you sort of understood what I was on about there. Um, yeah, 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 I'm here now. I'm here now. So, hopefully you can hear me. Oh, dearie me. So, yeah, that's the course. Uh Shitting X. So all of that stuff I was talking about the cause, none of you actually heard any of it, did you? Ah, look at that. So, yeah, so you've got the course bits here. Let me just move this over so you can actually see it a bit. So, yeah, so you've got all these different versions of the course. Oh, it's just popped it over there anyway. There you go. How about that? Um, Yeah, so there's loads of different things. It's just going to be really handy for people to learn. Like I said just now, if you heard me or not, a lot of it is stuff that is covered on plumber parts, but it's not laid out in this structured way where you could basically give it to someone and say, after this, you'll be able to do this amount of work um, rather than having to trawl all over YouTube looking for it. And also there's some stuff on there that isn't covered on plumber plumber parts, actually. For instance, um, pipe threading and things like that that I've never actually done on plumber parts for some reason. But there we go. So there, that's that's it. That's my story. That's what's been going on. Um so the future of what's been happening, obviously Ted, Ted might appear in the channel one day when he's a little bit older and he can sort of go, all right, dad, what's up? Um, yeah, which would be cool. Uh, and also, um, yeah, so we've got Oil Tank is going to be filmed this week. I've got a massive bathroom project coming up that's going to be loads, loads and loads of videos coming onto the channel. Um, I'm also getting some work done on my van that I want to show on the channel. Uh, there is going to be some stuff on Times of James as well, but that'll be more about what happened with Ted and that story. Um, and uh, I'm going to then be starting, uh, well, continuing with the borehole, which I'm going to be doing. Um, apparently, I'm not that far off hitting water, maybe even fitting oil. Uh, and uh, then I'll be getting on with the swimming pool, which will all be filmed on this channel and put on this channel. It's going to be absolutely great. Let's see if my guitar's in tune. Here we go. So, is, we, is this in tune? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Everyone loves a bit of a fucking guitar, don't they? Uh, Are you off tech qualified? I used to be, Sean, until I realised it's just a scam. (laughs) <laughs> and it is a total scam. Oh, my God. That is possibly, out of all the quangos, one of the shittest ones. Um, yeah. Um, so, Nick says, Hi, James. Can I ask you a quick question? How do you cap off Wavin Osma boss fitting if you no longer want to use that as a waste fitting? Uh, well, your best thing, if it's four inch, is to cut it down to where you need to put a straight socket on it and then actually put a proper uh, glued on cap socket into that. Um, I don't think you can get female versions of those sockets at four inch. So you will have to put a straight 110 mil socket on, glue it on uh, and then put another one on. If it's, if you're talking about, um, well, if it's Osmo, yeah, that'll have to be 110 mil. So yeah, straight coupling and then a straight cap onto that. Uh, that should do it. You can of course do what a lot of, I've, I've been to some houses where, the builder has put in those special ones when they where you tighten them up and they sort of compress out, but they're temporary for when you're doing a job. It's not actually, uh, yeah, it's not what you need what you need it for. So, uh, David Fee said, Jim Tracy, oh, what, oh what's going on? My staff and I bought a part house last year. Honestly, your videos have helped us so much; it's been unbelievable. Happy to support in whatever way I can. Uh, well, Alex, go and sign up on the uh, Thinkific course, mate. That's probably the best thing. Um, and if any of you are really sort of determined to sign up on it, um, yeah, 
it'd be great to know what you think of the course. Email me. Uh, you can email us directly using the uh, fill-in form uh, on the course, and I'll always be there. Um, Neil said, love your videos. You're a great person, plumber and father. Well, thank you, Neil. You don't know me, though. I could be a complete twat. <laughs> Ask my wife. Um, Alex Rady, yeah. Glad to know things are all good and safe. I saw your Instagram. Cheers, Alex. Um, thank you to Catty Crazy. Um, and I'm sorry, guys, that I didn't did have the sound off for ages. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to work on oil without qualification. I wanted to know if I needed it. Oh, Sean, it's a funny one, mate. Look, I'll tell you this, right? I had fitted an outdoor Grant Vortex. This was when I was off tech qualified. And it had a um, Tiger Loop going to it. So a Tiger Loop's a de-aeration device. And I'm actually going to be fitting one on my, my house when we film this next week and the week after. Uh, anyway, so I had an audit from off tech that day. And they came out, this guy came out. And um, he said to me, he said, oh, the Tiger Loop. He said, because it's an outside boiler. Um, we've decided that we're going to have tiger loops now have to be like five metres away from the boiler. And I was like, right, that's a long way. And uh, I, I understand they're obviously worried about the boiler spontaneously combusting out of nowhere and burning a tiger loop that's like a couple of metres away. So he made me move the tiger loop five metres away that I had to do off my own cost and time, which I wasn't actually that bothered about. But I was very bothered about the fact that he went and spoke to my customer um, without me and said, yeah, we just told James that he's installed this wrong according to regs now and we've asked him to change it. After that, that customer never run me to do any work ever again. Um, the other thing they did on that particular visit was he said to me, um, he said, obviously you've uh, spoken to uh, every house within a 50 metre radius to see if they've got a borehole. And I said to him, no. I said, the customer is not going to pay me to do that. I said, 50 metres is a long way. And I said, and that actually encompasses roughly about 15, 20 properties. And you want me to go and knock on each one of their door and find out if they've got a borehole or not. And if they have, what, 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 what am I going to do? And what if they're out? What if they don't know? I mean, honestly, it is the worst one out of all of them. I paid £500 to do my exam. At the end of that, they said, great, you passed your exam. I was like, brilliant, thank you. Uh, and then they said, uh, um, now you need to register. It costs 800 quid. And I was like, right, what do I get for that 800 quid? And they went, you get uh, a certificate of registration and you get a sticker for your van. And then she stopped on the phone, the lady did, and said, oh, no, I'm sorry, the sticker's a tenner. Honestly, it's just printing money. Someone got in there before you did, right, and came up with off tech and said we're going to be the people who are we're going to get in with the whoever's the thing in the government and we're going to be the people who write all the regs out for it and they are it's just a license to print money and rip off tradesmen i'm not a fan i'm afraid after that i let my off tech ticket slip and that was that i was happier just doing plumbing yeah so yeah uh Teeny Weenie said, hi, James. It's because of your channel. I intend to replace my bath drain and taps. Never done anything like this before. Wish me luck. Good luck. Uh, Sean Ammon, cheers for clearing that up. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, Sean, don't do it. You're best off. Don't tell anyone I said you this. I know I'm saying this on live YouTube to 70 people. But do the work. Just get a mate you know who you trust to sign it off for you. <laughs> it sounds so bad. I wouldn't do that with gas. But oil, I would. So, yeah. So that's how it is.
Have a great Monday, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your Easter bank holiday weekend. I'm going to go in and have a bath with Ted. He might do a shit on me. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to change his nap nap. Emily's going to give him a big old bit of booby juice. And then we're going to put him down for the night. And then we'll sit there for half an hour and then go to bed ourselves. Another day survived with our new baby boy. Have a great, great few days, guys. I'll see you in the next video, everybody. Thanks ever so much for watching. Ciao, Bella.